duty cycle in the CMAA eyes is the amount of time that a crane is being used within a given time period. So CMA typically looks at things based on hours of use. So if you are trying to determine what duty cycle you need for your application, you need to look at the capacity. You need to look at the percentage of capacity that that crane is lifting each hour. You also need to look at the number of lifts per hour and how many times that crane is being used. So basically what that does is you need to look, you know, determines your number of motor start stops and then also uh, will that'll help you determine what duty cycle your crane is going to be used for. So an end user needs to provide that information for the sales personnel uh, and also for engineering uh, because what that does is gives us a snapshot of what your application is so that we can determine what componentry to use on your overhead crane. So when classifying a crane, it's not really based on price point. What you need to do is look at maintenance and how much downtime affects your production. If you are looking at an application where you're using this crane on a regular basis, every hour, multiple shifts per day, downtime is really probably going to be an issue for you. So you need to look at the application and then duty cycle because you don't want a crane that's going to be cutting out on you on a regular basis. You need to look at the efficiency and what that's going to do for your production. If you buy the wrong equipment, what that's going to do is hurt you on the back end. So you need to make sure that the componentry is going to stand up to the time and rigorous use that it is going to be going through because the crane is going to be vital to your production. So a Class A crane is infrequent use and maintenance. So you typically see these in, let's say, a steel mill as a maintenance crane. It's, it's used to lift parts up for the, for the main process cranes as they go down. Also, you would see this used as a standby crane. So if a main crane goes down, you can move this crane in to perform lifts while the other one is getting fixed. A Class B crane is light service. You see this lifting maybe one or two times a day. You're not seeing it used over and over, or typically used as in a workstation environment. A Class C crane is more moderate use. You see that in a typical fab environment. Um, our crane shop, for example, you're really using them throughout the day on a more normal basis, but it's not seeing an overabundance of lifts or higher capacity lifts. So a class D crane is more of a heavy service, uh, heavy fabrication. You start to move into uh, more componentry that's designed based on lower maintenance. Um, you start to see higher capacity lifts uh, beyond 50% you know, of the capacity of the crane. Uh, more start stops per hour where you're, you're doing more lifts as well. So class E cranes are more severe service. These are ones that are vital to production. Uh, if this crane goes down, your production is down, and then you're losing money. So you, those types of cranes are used in more of an auto industry. Um, you see those in steel mills. Uh, again, more high production, higher output applications. So class F crane is a severe service. You see these in steel mills, hot metal cranes that are constantly being used for lifting materials, moving materials, and then going back, performing the next lift and continuing to go through the, through the application. So these are constantly going. Uh, you, typically you'll have a backup crane of equal service ready to be used in case this one goes down. If this is down, an entire plant shuts down. So when you move from a more modular type crane to a process crane, the things that you start to see changing or affecting your price is the hoist, the end trucks, and then the controls. Um, you start to see larger motors, uh, different bearings, um, and what those allow for is less maintenance.